only in the NFL, man, will you find a player that's under contract and then he wants to restructure his contract and then they end up trading him for a, a nickels and pennies. What the Houston Texans did today, man, was so unbelievably wild to me. It may go down as one of the worst trades I have ever seen any football team ever make. And I've seen my Raiders trade Khalil Mack and Amari Cooper in the same NFL season. But the difference between what the Raiders did and what the Texans did, the Raiders got multiple first-round picks. The Houston Texans have traded Jad- Jadavian Clowney and probably the third, top three, wide receiver in the NFL and DeAndre Hopkins. That, to me, is absolutely insanity. I, I just... I, I'm, to trade Clowney and Hopkins is insanity as it is. Because those, to me, are two guys you could build an entire franchise around, especially when you have Deshaun Watson and J.J. Watt. But the fact that they traded Clowney and DeAndre Hopkins and received zero first-round picks. Zero. This is a team that has zero first-round picks in this year's NFL draft. And that's if we do have an NFL draft. That's that's also up in the air. Um, from what I've told, there would not be any fans allowed to participate for the NFL draft this year, obviously, because of the coronavirus. And we all know what's going on with that. I don't really want to talk about that because I feel like you guys have probably heard enough of the coronavirus as it is. I just want to slowly settle on the NFL and now NFL free agency start because NFL, there is nothing in this world that could stop the NFL at this point. There could be a nuclear holocaust and the NFL and Roger Goodell will keep on pushing. They'll keep on going. I don't know if anything can stop the NFL because that, that, that organization and that sport makes so much stupid money. I think it's literally impossible to stop the NFL. It's, it's wild to me that NFL free agency is going on right now and these players can't even visit these like team facilities. They have to take like um, their um, their medicals and stuff like that, and their physicals with like a separate doctor and those papers. It's just such a, a hoopla and a mess right now. But I am absolutely shocked what the Houston Texans did. Because not only did they trade, uh, you could say he's a top five wide receiver guaranteed, and you could probably argue that he's top three. But DeAndre Hopkins is such a freaking stud. It is unbelievable. And he got traded, fleeced, to the Arizona Cardinals for washed-up, injury-prone David Johnson, who has owed three years and 30 plus million dollars a second-round pick And a fourth round pick. Dude, I killed the Raiders when they traded Amari Cooper to the Dallas Cowboys. Now look at that deal with the Raiders and the Cowboys for Amari Cooper. And look at this deal for the Houston Texans and the Arizona Cardinals. This is absolutely... And the Arizona Cardinals should be throwing a parade right now. They just fleeced the Houston Texans. Bill O'Brien has no business being an NFL GM. He probably has no business being an NFL coach. Yet here he is still after multiple failures in the wild card and playoff games. And now he just traded one of your top five players, a top three wide receiver for an aging running back. And the Texans agreed to pay every cent of that contract. That, to me, is stupidity and insanity. I can't think of another trade that's as bad as what the Houston Texans did today. It is so historically bad. Stats-wise, picks-wise, there is nothing in this deal that I could sit there and say, man, the Houston Texans really paid this off and they're really going to do really good off. There's nothing in this deal. Because second round and a fourth round pick are, to me, not worth DeAndre Hopkins. DeAndre Hopkins is worth multiple first round picks. Or at least one plus some other incentives like a second or a fourth. David Johnson, a second rounder and a fourth. Why weren't more teams trying to get this deal done? Now, I know the rumor out there is that Hopkins was having a fallout with Bill O'Brien. But, boys, this dude was under a three-year contract. You had no rush in the world. That's why it makes it so wild with football. 
Like football to me is such a wild sport that like for them to go above and beyond to trade players when they're under contract, I, I will never understand. Maybe because I'm such a basketball fan, I see when guys are under contract. Like unless in basketball, unless you're going to be a free agent in the in the next year or two, then they'll consider trading you. But if you're locked up, for example, like Carl Anthony Towns of the Minnesota Timberwolves, he just signed a, a max deal. And let's say Towns came out and said, yo, I want to be traded immediately. The, the Minnesota Timberwolves would not flirt with the idea up until the point where they realize, okay, now we're going to lose them. If you have them on a four-year contract, you have them for at least two, three years. You had two years to negotiate a DeAndre Hopkins trade. But the NFL was so wild to me in that aspect, my boys. Because we've seen this with like like Odell Beckham, Khalil Mack, these guys who are, are under contract and all of a sudden – the long-term contracts, and all of a sudden they want to like restructure it and fix it and add more money to the deal. And these teams, for whatever reason, they they fall under the pressure and then they just subcume under the, the system, I guess, and trade these star athletes for nothing. I never thought I would see a team trade away more talent than what the Raiders did a few years ago when they got rid of Khalil Mack and Amari Cooper. But the Houston Texans, man, they took the cake. Clowny, and you didn't get a first-rounder. DeAndre Hopkins, and you didn't get a first rounder. And you don't have a first rounder in the draft. That is insanity. That is stupidity. And as a fan of the sport, and I'm so like balls deep in football right now because there's literally nothing else to watch. And we'll get into that in a bit. And I've, I've discussed it on Friday's podcast. That there, there's literally nothing. I, nothing. There's nothing to watch. Movies are being canceled. Events are being canceled. It, cities are being shut down as if it's Resident Evil. So I, I'm balls deep in the NFL free agency this time because it's the only sport that's like thriving in a way. Not thriving, but just they're still kicking the tires. I just I never thought I would see a team trade so much talent and not receive enough back that to say that's just worth it. Not even a first rounder. That is, to me, insane. And if I'm any other NFL team in the NFL, I'm just like, you're telling me that you were potentially flirting with the idea of, for one, trading DeAndre Hopkins. Because you need to remember, your quarterback is Deshaun Watson, and he needs weapons. You just traded away his number one target, a top five for sure, and possibly a top three wide receiver for a bag of Fritos and... What, two licorices? Look, David Johnson used to be a stud. And I had David Johnson on my fantasy team the year he like blew up for the Arizona Cardinals. He was really good because he could catch the football. He could run the football. He was a big running back. But running backs in the NFL is the easiest position to replace and fill. Running backs grow on trees. They just do. How many? You can name so many running backs in the past that who have had great seasons, MVP caliber seasons, amazing rookie seasons. And then they falter out and you don't hear about them. And the next thing you know, they're out of the NFL in a year or two. They have an amazing season. They get the huge sum of money. And then two years later, you don't even hear about them again. And your team is already drafting a new running back or trading for a new running back. Running backs to me are the easiest position. Running backs are like the centers of basketball, where there's so many of them that you could find them anywhere. In basketball, the hardest position to find is point guard and the wing position. In football, it's the quarterback and a guy that can get sacks and a receiver that can catch and a tight end. I, I just, I, the Houston Texans, it, this is the problem with giving a coach too much power. It works sometimes. It works with Bill Belichick. Doesn't work all the time. Bill, I mean, look what happened to the Patriots last year. They lost Gronkowski. They traded for, but well, not they didn't trade for him. They signed Antonio Brown. They had traded for Josh Gordon, I believe. Um, Josh Gordon suspended. They got rid of him. Antonio Brown, they got rid of him. Gronkowski retired. They never replaced him. Um, they made a trade for that guy from Atlanta, his um, Sanu. Sanu was garbage for the Patriots. He Because Sanu's like a... a so he was like a slot receiver. He's not that big type of receiver. Um, they never gave Brady a tight end. There's times that, you know, GM slip up. But my point is, is that it's very difficult, I believe, unless you're lucky, to have a coach 
be very successful on the field and be also successful with building a team. I truly believe in football, you need two heads at the table. It's got to be a tag team partnership. And for all the shit that John Gruden got in the last few years about how, you know, how he was running the Raiders, because Gruden's first year in the Raiders, he was technically the the GM. Like, Reggie McKenzie was there, but he was really not calling the shots because if it was up to Reggie McKenzie, he would have just gave Khalil Mack his money if they would have stuck with, like, Del Rio and McKen- McKenzie's partnership. Uh, but Gruden got there, didn't think Khalil Mack was worth it. The difference between what the Raiders and the Texans did, the Raiders got first-round picks, and they also got, like, two teams that ended up falling apart. The Bears didn't make the playoffs last year. The Cowboys missed the playoffs as well, even though the Raiders-Cowboys pick was last year's draft, um, which ended up being what they have now at running back. But, but like with the Cowboys, they just agreed to a deal with Amari Cooper. And look, I love Amari Cooper. I'm a huge fan of Amari Cooper. But at the end of the day, the biggest problem that I've always had with Amari Cooper is that he'll give you an amazing game where he has like 235 yards and like two or three touchdowns. And, and he looks like an absolute monster. He looks like a top five wide receiver. And then he'll give you like five straight weeks of like four receptions, 25 yards, Two receptions, 17 yards. Three receptions, 15 yards. He's so inconsistent. And he's always been inconsistent. Like, when he got traded to the Cowboys, those few weeks he was there towards the end of the season, because the Raiders traded Amari during the trade deadline two years ago, um, he was amazing for the Cowboys. But last year for the Cowboys, in a full season, it was the same Amari Cooper. Had great games, and then he was also irrelevant for, like, 80% of the games. I understand why the Cowboys gave him five years, $100 million. The dude's still very young. He's 25 years old. He still has a shit ton of potential. Um, you got to give your quarterback all the weapons he can. He has Ezekiel Elliott in the backfield. Now, you know, he has Amari, a wide out. Um, but I, I just, Amari to me, like, I'd much rather trade for, like, Stefan Diggs than sign Amari Cooper. Because I know Stefan Diggs steps up when the, in pressure situations. Which, by the way, it was just announced that the Bills have acquired Stefan Diggs. And to me, that's a good acquisition for them. Because you got to remember, like, think of what the Bills avoided. People forget that the Bills traded for Antonio Brown last year with the, with the Steelers. And Antonio Brown pretty much kind of blocked that trade by saying he wasn't going to show up to Buffalo. Which then the, the Steelers turned around and traded him to the Raiders, which... Chain of reaction, it worked out for nobody, and the Steelers ended up with the draft pick, and the Steelers walked away as bandits. The Bills, they get to avoid the circus of Antonio Brown, and they end up with Stephen Diggs, and I think that's a great target for Josh Allen. Yeah, he's going from Minnesota to Buffalo. Not the best city-to-city um, upgrade. Sorry, Buffalo. But the Buffalo fans are amazing. I love the Buffalo fans, man. They're so, so into the game, and they're such diehard fans. Uh, but yeah, missing out on Antonio Brown ended up working wonders for the Buffalo Bills. But in hindsight, let's just say if I had to choose between Stephen Diggs and Amari Cooper, I would have picked Stephen Diggs over Amari. And I love Amari. I always will. Amari on the Raiders, especially whenever they played the Chargers, where he was so elite. Nobody on the Chargers could cover um, Amari Cooper. But the problem was he's so inconsistent. He drops a lot of balls. He really does. That At the end of the game, that, that's reality. Like Amari, sure, he may be worth he may be worth the $100 million, five years that he got from the Cowboys. But you got to make sure he's giving you more than just two out of like four weeks of good play. He's got to be consistent. He's got to be able to catch the football. He's got to play the way he played when he first landed in Dallas. And that brings me back to the Texans, man. Bill O'Brien. DeAndre Hopkins and a fourth rounder for David Johnson, a second and a fourth. The David Johnson. And like the, the cherry on the top of the, of the Sunday of that terrible trade is the fact that the Texans agreeing that they will pay the rest of David Johnson's contract. David Johnson was a fantastic pickup for my fantasy team a couple years ago. But the last two years, he's been injury prone and he has been washed. He is headed to washed. And I feel like the Texans do this every year. They always trade up for a washed running back. They did that with um, 
Lamar Miller before he like when he got traded from the Dolphins to the Texans. They did that with Carlos Hyde when they traded him from the 49ers. They get these guys that had like these really good peaks, but those peaks are over. They're trending downhill. And now you get this guy like David Johnson. I'm sorry, I guarantee you, and I could put this podcast on the line, I could put money on the line, David Johnson will not come close to equaling the production that DeAndre Hopkins was giving you on a weekly basis. That is, to me, the stupidest trade I've ever seen. No first-round picks. No first round picks in this year's draft, and next, and like I think they have a first round next year, but not receiving an extra first round pick from trading the former number one pick, Clowney, who I think is still amazing, but Khalil Mack is better. And I, I always said that Khalil Mack was better than Clowney, and it ended up being true. And DeAndre Hopkins, that is incompetence at its finest. Unbelievable. I've seen some bad trades in my life by all sports. This one is up there. Definitely top three, maybe even number one. I, I, we have to see who they draft in the, in the second and fourth round. You can sometimes find gems in those two rounds. But if they don't, this may go down as the worst trade I have ever seen in my life. And if you're the Cardinals, man, Larry Fitzgerald, DeAndre Hopkins, Kyle Murray. What a beautiful situation for him. He he picked the right sport. Leaving the Oakland A's to go to football. You have a quarterback's coach. You have one of the, the amazingest football players in the world. An, an absolute awesome individual. He's like a coach on the field in Larry Fitzgerald, who had a renaissance here last year. Bounced back. Looked like he was in his prime. And now you give Kyle Murray DeAndre Hopkins, and all you had to give up was David Johnson and two picks in the second and fourth. Ooh. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I, I've seen some crazy shit in my life, my boys. This is one of the worst trades I've ever seen. Hands down. Hands down. In other news, in other NFL news, there's been a lot of movement. The Raiders, though, man. I'm obviously a Raider fan, unfortunately, depending how you see it. I, I was really hoping they would go for Tom Brady, man. I, I was really hoping they would go for Tom. I thought, you know, you're in Las Vegas. No Nevada state tax. We got money to blow. I'm pretty sure they could have unloaded car if they wanted to. Um, I'm off the car bandwagon. I have been for quite a while. Um, that's not a shot at car. I just, you know, ever since he broke his leg that one season, he's never been the same. Ever since Musgrave left him as his offensive coordinator, he's never been the same. His throws are off. He, he makes a lot of critical mistakes. Um, so I was hoping... With opening a new arena, with becoming the Las Vegas Raiders, I was I was really hoping that they would go all in on Tom Brady. Apparently, that's not the case. They signed a linebacker from from the Chicago Bears. Um, I like that signing. They needed some linebacker help. This dude started eight games. There's only eight games in his three year career, but he was very impressive in those eight games that he started for the Chicago Bears. Um, and and the one that pisses me off the most, man, it, Marcus Mariota. Look, there's a reason why Mariota got benched by the Tennessee Titans. There's a reason why the Tennessee Titans went from being, you know, potentially this team could be good if Mariota figures it out, to being, oh my God, they're in the AFC Championship game because of Ryan Tannehill, who just signed a a whopping bigger deal. And I thought the Titans were going to be in on Brady as well, but I can understand why why they're going to run it back with Tannehill. I just, Marcus Mariota and Derek Carr competing for the starting job, it, to me at least, and I don't know the details of the Mariota contract, it's a no-win possibility. I, I don't trust neither of them to get the job done. Um, I think there's a upside, low cost, depending what they gave Mariota. If they gave them a, a cheap contract, then there's high upside with the low cost, but if they didn't, then I have my concerns. Um I just, I don't know, man. I see a lot of people saying, well, this is going to be like Tennessee Titans, you know, Mariota going to a new team. He he might have learned something from Tannehill. Yeah, but the Titans looked so bad with Mariota as a starter. And it was day and night difference from Mariota as starting quarterback of the Titans and Ryan Tannehill as a starting quarterback of the Titans. They became a legitimate threat in the AFC. I don't see like this Mariota car partnership or who is going to come out the best working out. I, I really don't. I have major concerns. I think the Raiders have to go sign more defensive players. Um, I think they should have made a trade for Stefan Diggs. I think they should have. I know they're very. I, I, the Raiders are going to draft a wide receiver in the first round. Spoiler. 
But I'm very sure of the Raiders drafting a wide receiver. So I can see why they could be hesitant on trading for another wide receiver, especially after the Antonio Brown situation. But I would have liked for them to get a Stephen Diggs and then still draft another wide receiver. Because, like, you got to give Carr all the opportunities you can. Or, I mean, I, look, you could have gotten Diggs and then made a run at Brady. I, I really think you could have. Um, I, I just, I'm not really liking what I'm hearing from Oakland. This is a team, not Oakland. My bad. My bad. Apologies. I, I got to get used to the fact that they're not from Oakland anymore. I'm trying to give Las Vegas the benefit of the doubt. But when you have no state tax and you have all the money in the world to pay play with and you're getting outbid by the Miami Dolphins, I, I have a serious problem with that. Yeah, yeah, I think that cornerback that the Dolphins signed and his, his name escapes me for the moment. Um, he played for Dallas last year. Maybe an overpay. But the Raiders need some corners, man. I remember when we talked ourselves into Steve Smith and David Amerson. We have been hungry for a lockdown corner since Namdi. Honestly, we talked ourselves into Steve Smith and David Amerson, man. It gets really tough to be a Raider fan every year. I, I want to believe, and Gruden really proved me wrong last year, but there's so many more steps to take, and I feel like signing this linebacker from the Chicago Bears, yeah, that's a good start, but you got to make other moves. Marcus Mariota, come on. Tom Brady's right there, and I'm, if Tom Brady signs... With the Los Angeles Chargers, I'm going to be very disappointed. I know there's a lot of noise about the, the Buccaneers. The Buccaneers signing um, Brady with Bruce Arians there is interesting. Because um, then what happens to Jameis Winston? I think he goes back to New England at this point. But I'm very, very fearful of the Chargers landing Brady. Especially since last week I told you that Brady's opening his own Hollywood um, you know, staff and stuff. I have a feeling my final prediction... Tom Brady ends up signing with the LA Chargers. And if that's the case and the Raiders settled on Marcus Mariota, I'm going to be very triggered. But, you know, I I'm ready to get hurt again. I was very ready to get hurt again in this morning. And the Raiders, you know, it I don't get surprised when they disappoint me. They disappointed me all the time. You know, the one year we made the playoffs in like almost 20 years now, um, our quarterback car broke his leg on the second to last game. And we had Matt McGloin start a wild card game in Houston. I, I mean, it, it's just, it's nauseating, my boys. It's its its very nauseating. I, I just, I hope this move to Vegas removes the curse of Hoquin. Um, but I have my doubts. I, I just, I think they had an opportunity to sign the greatest quarterback of all time at this moment, even though Mahomes is going to be the GOAT at some point. But let's give it to Brady for now. He's going to relinquish that title probably in the next year or two. Um, and if to miss on that opportunity, when your offensive line is pretty strong and you have some weapons on you know the wide receiver route and you have a, a really great tight end, and you're probably going to draft the wide receiver. I, I feel like it was a mistake not going all in on Tom Brady. And if he ends up on the Chargers, I am going to be triggered because it just you had the opportunity to bring Tom Brady to Las Vegas in a new arena. That would have been huge. I, I really think when you're opening a new facility, a new stadium, you need a marquee piece. And the Raiders don't have that marquee piece. It's not Derek Carr. It's it's not Murray. It's it's going to be interesting to see what happens. But I really think the Raiders dropped the ball by night signing Tom Brady. I think that was a missed opportunity. I think they really should have made that move. I, like I I don't understand why you wouldn't. I don't see what Mariota brings to the table that really justifies or really changes anything, except start a quarterback battle between two guys who are probably at best both backup quarterbacks in the NFL. One who's severely overpaid and one who hasn't lived up to his potential. Which is wild when you think about it, man. Like, Mariota Winston was supposed to be the new, like, Manning Bray. I, they, how, they hyped that up so much that that was going to be, like, the next big quarterback rivalry. Now, Winston, yeah, like, he's on the turnbuckle waiting to see if the Buccaneers land Brady or not. And now Marcus Mariota is the backup quarterback of Derek Carr. Raiders, do better, man. You're in Vegas. You have no state tax. There should be no team outbidding you. If you want a certain player, break the bank. You live in Las Vegas. Now, this is not Oakland anymore. You're in Sin City. Get the job done, Mayock. Get the job done, Gruden. Nobody should be outbidding you, especially not the Miami Dolphins. Just throwing that out there. 
Just throwing that out there, my boys. Ridiculous. Like, come on, do better. And your first official day of free agency as the Las Vegas Raiders, you already dropped the ball. WrestleMania 26. We have been talking about it for a minute. Is it being canceled? Is it being postponed? What is going on? Um, WWE announced today that WrestleMania 26 or 36? Is it 36 or 26? It's 36, right? It has to be 36 because I remember WrestleMania 20, which was he who should not be named versus Triple H and Shawn Michaels and the WrestleMania WrestleMania 36, my bad boys. Bit kind of, you know. Um, WrestleMania 36, we've been, you know, monitoring it, seeing what's going to happen. I thought Vince was very selfishly waiting way too long to announce this, and he was kind of pretty much waiting for Tampa Bay to be the one to cancel this. But it was announced today that WrestleMania will not be taking place in Tampa Bay. Instead, WrestleMania, for the first time ever, will be taking place at the WWE Performance Center with no fans. And I look, I get I know you guys are probably sick and tired of hearing about the coronavirus or you need a distraction from all that shit. I get that. I get that a lot. Gotta talk about it, though, because this is insanity. WrestleMania 36, where you're going to see Drew McIntyre defeat Brock Lesnar, Goldberg versus Roman, AJ, the Phenomenal One versus the Phenom, AJ Styles versus The Undertaker, and they kind of flirted with the Biker Taker. And I swear to God, if he comes out with the bike Limp Biscuit, I am going to mark, and I am going to mark very hard. Um, and also uh, a six hour show potentially like in a performance center that's empty, which it's pretty much a gym. You know, the performance center is pretty much a, a wrestling gym at the end of the day to have a WrestleMania card there. Man, it, it, I'm very interested to see how they pull that off, but I'm also very disappointed that potentially the Undertaker's final good match, great match, and his final match altogether is going to take place there. I'm very disappointed that Edge, Randy Orton, how great that build and that rivalry is, is going to take place in front of an empty, an empty audience. It sucks, man. It's WrestleMania season. And nobody can really celebrate it or, or be excited about it. And it's going to be on pay-per-view Sunday, April 5th. Um, as of this moment, the WWE Hall of Fame and NXT TakeOver have both been canceled. Um, even though if I'm WWE, I would put NXT. This is what I would do. This would have been my plan. And I don't know why WWE is not doing this. Because for me, I think it's a simple solution. You're not going to run the show with any fans present. Okay, fine. Understand that. NXT TakeOver, Wednesday against AEW. AEW is also running their show with no fans. So I would have NXT TakeOver on Wednesday. I would have the Hall of Fame on Friday. I would have Night 1 of WrestleMania on Saturday and Night 2 of WrestleMania on Sunday. Kind of like Wrestle Kingdom. To me, I think that would be the best possible outcome because you're still serving your fans and you could still have everybody that you want. And you could do it on two nights. Saturday and Sunday. Friday Hall of Fame. Saturday night one. Sunday night two. The Wednesday before all that takeover. The, the situation is so dire that this is this is where we're at this moment. I, I think having just the whole... Just saying like, oh, WrestleMania is taking place on Sunday at the PC Center. That to me is just really shitty. And I feel for the fans that bought tickets. I feel for the fans that rented out, you know, hotels and Airbnbs that were planning on spending the night over there that were probably going to go to their first WrestleMania. For that to be taken from you, that sucks. I really do think the WWE should have considered two nights. And I think this whole thing is insanity. I, it's just absolute insanity. But this is where we're at. You know, WrestleMania 36 in an empty audience at the WWE Performance Center. Let me know down below what you think about that. Because to me, that is so wild. Just so unbelievably wild. That WrestleMania. It's not just like any pay-per-view, my boys. It's the Super Bowl of wrestling. It's WrestleMania. And it's going to take place in front of nobody at a WWE gym. And we're all going to watch. I guarantee you it will have a lot of viewership. And it's the only way Roman Reigns will go over. I'm sorry to be the one to say it, but facts are facts. Insane. 
just insane, man. What this situation just gets worse. Like it seems like it gets worse every hour. It's just, it seems like the stipulation changes as each hour passes by. It really does. I mean, now they're saying there's not going to be any NBA basketball to the end of June, which would mean the season, the championship, wouldn't be decided till August, and that's best case scenario at this moment. Um, it's just everything's up in the air. Um, but yeah, April 5th, WrestleMania 36, the Super Bowl of Wrestling in the WWE Performance Center with zero fans of attendance. Wild. Wild, man. I, I just had to take a moment to pause just to really consider that. Um, this is going to be a very short episode. Again, your boy started this podcast a little bit late. But again, look, man, the, the other problem is with all these cancellations and all these things being suspended and ended... And all these movies being pushed back and, and shooting for those movies being postponed, like the Batman and Matrix and all those movies. Um, there really isn't a lot to talk about. We're nearing that point of nothing to talk about. Just nothing to talk about because there's nothing going on. There's no basketball till the end of June, and that's best case. And those basketball games will take place at like the practice facilities. We'll see how the WWE pulls this off, and we'll see how AEW pulls that off. But now the new rule is no gatherings of 10 or more people. Sorry, you need more than 10 people to put on a wrestling show. No Disneyland. No, It's just no movie theaters. Everything's locked up, man. So there really isn't really any much to talk about. And that makes doing these things kind of difficult because what is there to talk? Thank God the NFL was... Well, not thank God, but thank goodness the NFL kind of gave us a distraction for a day to be like, oh, we could at least talk about that. But after that ends, what is there really to talk about? I don't know. It's a, it's a crazy, it's scary thing to think about. Um, but yeah, that's why this episode is short, my boys. It's just, I, I had like four bulletin points. That's life right now. That is life right now. I do have some questions. I have one question. Uno question. It comes from the commissioner of Gold Coast Federation, my boss man, Joseph Saint, uh, my proud co-host on Mats and Marks. Um, not sure if that's happening this Wednesday. I highly doubt that. Um, there's going to be some important Gold Coast Federation news coming your way Wednesday and Thursday. So make sure you keep your eyes peeled for that. We know we have been promoting a show for April 11th. Um, it, it, I'll be honest with you, and they might get mad at me that I'm announcing it here. That is subject to change. Very highly subject to change. Um, and that's not because of us. That's just the situation and, and the life that we're living right now. We want to put a show on, but if we're unable to, we're unable to. It, it That goes for any independent show. And if you're a fan of independent wrestling, I highly advise you go look for your favorite independent wrestler and go buy them a shirt. Go buy one of their merchandises because they are they are losing and they are ending up not getting a lot of the money that they were very much looking forward to and probably had in their plans. So if you're a fan of independent wrestling, please support it and go support those indie wrestlers that are losing a lot of money. There's a lot of indie wrestlers, man, that they live off of these paychecks. So uh, make sure you go check them out. Somebody like Chris Cadillac, Mikey O'Shea, um, Helmet, the list goes on and on. Just make sure to go follow Gold Coast Federation on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, um, because there will be an announcement coming this week of the plans for Gold Coast Federation shows moving forward. Um, I'm going to be on, or I will be, or somebody from GCF will be on Brian Alvarez's Wrestling Observer Live this Thursday. Um, um, and we'll be making a huge Gold Coast Federation announcement on Brian Alvarez's Wrestling Observer Live this Thursday afternoon. So keep your eyes peeled for that. There will be more information coming your way about Gold Coast Federation. It's, just, it's a sketchy situation, man, that you really can't figure out. But anyways, this question comes from my boy, Joseph Say, the commissioner of GCF. Who would you have booked better during the Attitude Era? Um, That's a very good question. Um, obviously... The Attitude Era, known as the greatest era of professional wrestling ever. Um, if I had to think of somebody, I would book. Like, obviously, everybody knows I'm an Eddie Guerrero stan. I, I stan Eddie 
since day one. I, I cried tears, man, when Eddie passed away. And I was still in junior high when that happened. Um, Eddie, though, I, I remember when Eddie debuted in WWE. He debuted with Perry Saturn and Dean Malenko and Chris Benoit. And the story about that situation is Eddie hits a frog splash and he pretty much dislocates his shoulder. So Eddie's put on the injured list as his first night of debuting with Benoit Saturn and Malenko. And quickly that stable was was broken apart and each of those individuals went and did their own singles thing in WWF. Um, so I would I would say Eddie, but I mean Eddie had his run. He was European champion. He was IC champion. He had that romance storyline with China. Um, but I think I probably would have given Eddie more main like main title shots. Like I would have loved to have seen like Eddie versus Stone Cold or Eddie versus like Chris Jericho for the undisputed titles. One of those things I wish I would have seen during the Attitude Era or Eddie versus um, Shawn Michaels. That is a match. That I'm very disappointed we never got to see. Eddie Guerrero versus Shawn Michaels would have been an unbelievable instant classic. And the funny thing is, or the unfortunate thing is, that we were supposed to get Eddie versus Shawn Michaels that year at WrestleMania before Eddie Guerrero passed away, unfortunately. That was the end game there. Like, Eddie was supposed to win the World Heavyweight title, eventually drop it before the WrestleMania 22 or 21 trying to remember it's either 21 or 22 maybe 22 and i think they had a plan for wrestlemania 22 to have eddie guerrero versus Shawn michaels and that would have been an unbelievable classic i can only be- imagine the build-up to that but another wrestler that i would have probably pushed during the ruthless aggression era owen hart and here's why so brett leaves to wcw the montreal screw job i would have went for full force with Owen Hart as my guy. Now, I don't know what kind of bad blood Owen and Vince had, but I would have said, oh, fine, we lost Brett. Guess what? Don't need him. I'm going to give the other Hart the major push. I'm going to give him the, the the WWF flag, the Attitude Era flag, and I'm going to let him carry it because everything they did with Owen Hart, turning him into, like, putting him with the Nation of Domination, making him, like, fly into the ring, they made him a gimmick, and Owen Hart was one of the best wrestlers in the world at the time. I think Owen Hart should have been in like the main events. He should have had rivalries again with Stone Cold for the WWF title. He could have had rivalries with Triple H, with The Rock, um, with Shawn Michaels. You could have had the Montreal Revenge um, program with Shawn Michaels and Owen Hart. Um, and you probably, as shitty as it sounds, you probably could have avoided what eventually happened. Um, may he rest in peace as well. Um, Owen Hart, I would have pushed him. I really would have. I would have been like, don't need Brett. Got the other heart. And I would have had Owen even say, I'm the best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. Um, I, I would have went with Owen Hart. I think Owen would have killed it during the Attitude Era, man. And I think he just, if things wouldn't have went the way they did and there wouldn't have been bad blood, with Brett going to WCW, my petty move, instead of burying Owen, I would have pushed Owen Hart to the moon and just had him have these rivalries because it's very much of a passing of the torch too for guys like The Rock and Austin and then Triple H and DX. Like You could have had Owen do so many different things as your guy. But yeah, I would have picked either Eddie or Owen Hart. I think one of those two great, late, great legends would have been mega stars during the Attitude Era and I would have pushed them to the moon. Just story-wise, um, story arc-wise, Eddie being the underdog versus like a Triple H or a Stone Cold or or a Rock would have told the story itself. Eddie had so much charisma since his days in New Japan and Mexico. That dude could have sold the crowd easily. Could have booked him as a major obnoxious charismatic kill or he could have had him as the very much underdog charismatic babyface. Owen, you could have booked him as the new king of hearts. Or the best there is, the best there was. And you could have had amazing matches with Austin again. Where, you know, he could have talked about breaking Austin's neck. You could have had amazing matches with The Rock. Amazing rivalries with DX. The list goes goes on and on. Um, but yeah, those were the two that I probably would have bugged. But boys, this is a very short episode of Hollywood Uncensored. So please slap that thumb. Subscribe and join the Hollywood Quick. Links are all down below in the description. Comment down below. Let me know what you think about all the NFL free agency moves so far. Let me know down below what you think of WrestleMania 36 being moved from Tampa Bay and headed to the WWE Performance Center to be aired if for everybody around no fans, let me know what you think about that in the comment section down below. This has been Hollywood Uncensored episode number nine. Links are all down below in the description. I will see you guys tomorrow morning, afternoon for WWE Raw.
top 10 reactions. I'll see you guys then. You guys enjoy the rest of your night. Too sweet.